wrong with me? If I didn't uh, get good enough grades, what's wrong with me? If I got in a fight with a friend, what's wrong with me? If I got in trouble with my parents, it was what's wrong with me? Um, and I always saw myself as just not being good enough and, um, and having you know copious amounts of flaws. If I could just fix this, if I could just fix that. This is Scratch Your Own Itch, the one show that delivers the conversations that we're afraid to share, but we need to. This show is all about creating a life worth living. I'm Logan Tyler Nelson, and I'm your host. So you're going to hear conversations with creators and entrepreneurs talk about what they do, their current and past traumas, how they became who they are, and what they are truly curious about. This is the show where we talk about the things we think about a lot, but need to talk about more. Please take note that this show is not a substitute for actually creating a life worth living, because this show will stir your beliefs, make you question what it means to create a life worth living. So my promise to you is to always give you one question to answer for yourself today, to start turning your dreams into a reality. Hey, you. Yeah, just you. So my curiosity question is, have you ever been guilty of letting the story of your mind take over the story you have in your heart? Okay, so let me really ask you this again. Have you ever been guilty of letting the story of your mind take over the story of your heart? Okay, so let me set the tone. Because you may have something inside of you that is absolutely superhuman that you find that is so easy to do for you, but everyone else couldn't imagine doing this thing. But what is this thing? If you don't know, this episode was made for you because my guest is a master at this. Her name is Alyssa Dare Nelson. And not only do we share the same last name, We are both super passionate about the idea of living in a world in which more people are living in their area of supremacy, the area in which they love their life because they have the ability to practice the strengths as maybe a speaker or a writer or a website developer, or even maybe they just love playing games, but they don't know how to make a living in that. And if you don't think this is possible, I want you to think again, because it all comes down to the story you tell yourself. You may be thinking who my guest is. And well, my sidekick for today is seriously freaking awesome. But here's the thing. She believes you are too. She believes you're freaking awesome as well. Her name is Alyssa Dare Nelson, and she is regularly featured on television, news segments, inside major blogs and publications, and on podcasts from all over the globe. She's an accomplished success coach, speaker, host of the freaking awesome Entrepreneur SM podcast, as well as published author of the book, From Frustrated to Freaking Awesome, Four Steps to Achieve the Success You're Wired For. But more than anything else, she's exceedingly pr- she's an exceedingly proud wife and mother of two who loves helping others and discover how to make their businesses and relationships thrive in harmony. And I won't lie to you because some of that she wrote herself, which makes her a freaking awesome writer as well. I mean, she didn't write all of it, but she wrote most of it, that introduction at least. So, well, anyways, I've been talking a lot, so I want to have you meet this amazing person. So without further ado, please invite Alyssa Dare Nelson on to scratch your own itch. Well, hey, I, Alyssa, how you doing? Hey, Logan, how are you? Good. I'm really good. Thank you so much for um, 
accepting my invitation onto the show. I, I uh, really love what you do. Um, but before we get into that, I, I do. Um, the mission of the show is to make you know someone feel less alone and and their anxiety is about their future, maybe, but to also scratch their own itch in the only way they know how. So. I know you're a, a, a smart woman. I, I've heard, I've done my research and know you went to uh, school for health and and you love science. So what is it that you're so curious about? What's that one question that you think uh, you're trying to constantly answer and in doing so, you are uh, making sort of a living inside of that? Um, well, thank, first of all, I want to say thanks for having me on. Um, and you know, that's a, that's a, that's a big, big question, but I, and so to answer that, I will kind of give a little bit about, um, my history and kind of what brought me to where I am. Um, and you know, for the first 30 years of my life, I was constantly asking the question, what's wrong with me? Um, at every turn, what's wrong with me? If I didn't uh, get good enough grades, what's wrong with me? If I got in a fight with a friend, what's wrong with me? If I got in trouble with my parents, was what's wrong with me? Um, and I always saw myself as just not being good enough, and um, and having you know copious amounts of flaws. If I could just fix this, if I could just fix that, uh, you know. And I I went to go a- achieve lots and lots of things. You know, I was a Division One gymnast. Um, I was uh, a straight A student. I was on the dean's list in high school and in college. I, I graduated, um, you know, not, not you know, valedictorian, but I graduated high in my class. And when I went back the second time uh, for my nursing degree, I, I did. I graduated with a 4.0 um, with two little kids and uh, with a marriage that was falling apart and going through a separation. And so, you know, achievement wasn't the issue. Um, but nonetheless, I was still going, what's wrong with me at every single turn. So nothing was ever good enough, um, for me to truly accept myself for being enough, uh, for me to feel like I was worthy. Um, and so I found myself at age 30, you know, going through this, this divorce, um, at the lowest of all low points of my life, even though I had achieved everything that I had set my mind to, my life looked how it was supposed to, I'd gotten my degree. I had, a, had a house, had kids, had, you know, all of these things. And yet I just was so miserable. And so once again, I found myself asking what's wrong with me. And, um, um, I was tired of asking that question. And so when I found the Strengths Finder profile, um, it was one of the very first times that I had something that I felt was legitimate scientific proof that told me that there was things that were right with me. Um, you know, certainly I'd been told by coaches, by teachers, by my parents, by friends, et cetera. Yeah, you're great, right? Like we all have people in our, in our life, hopefully that tell us, Hey, you're great. Um, and I knew that I had potential inside of me, but I, I couldn't figure out what was right with me. So, uh, to give a little bit of background about this strengths finder profile, in case you are not familiar with it, um, a gentleman by the name of Don- Donald, Dr. Donald Clifton, um, went through 40 years of research with his team to figure out, hey, how are people wired? What if uh, we started looking for things that were right with people instead of things that were wrong with people? Um, because, you know, back in the back in the 60s and certainly even up through today, we have people who are like, let's just fix what's broken. Let's not make what's already working better, right? So he was tired of asking that question and diagnosing people with, you know, all these things that were wrong with them. He's like, what if we actually focused on what was right with them? So through 40 years of research, they came up with this psychometric. So a psychometric is actually a a profile that is, it's repeatable, it's reliable, uh, which means that, you know, you can be in a bad mood and still get the same reliable results as if you were in a good mood. So it's not a personality test. It doesn't t- tell you about your, your mood right now. It tells you how you're wired. And so for the first time in black and white, there was things that were right with me. And I thought, oh my gosh, wow, what if I could actually embrace that? 
So that was the big question that I had to ask that 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 scratch that I needed to itch was figuring out all the things that were right with me. And once I did that, trying to help others do the very same. Wow. Uh, wow. I love this so much. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you so much for just, like being vulnerable about saying that, that, you know, you felt like you, you were broken, you know, you felt like there's a point in your life and I'm kind of getting emotional about it because, um, a, I'm just an emotional guy and B, um, I know that there's that one person that's probably heard that inside their, their head, and felt that same thing that goes like, ah, oh, I just feel broken. I really do feel like there's something wrong with me. And what is wrong with me? Even though I am following the 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 sort of rules of success and the and the road, and and I'm and I'm trying so hard to do everything right, and to allow. I think really this test for me, it like gives you just a sort of um agreement with yourself to go, you know, and I'm going to freaking zag while everyone else is zigging. Like I'm, I'm going to just go out there and, and really follow my strengths instead of going and questioning them more and more and more and more and more. So I love this. Um, I personally got to be transparent and tell you, I haven't taken the test, but it was all on purpose. I wanted to uh, first, I guess, really get a sense of what my transformation will be. So who am I talking right now before the strength finder test? And then, you know, maybe I uh, have you back on like an invitation, maybe in a couple of months or so. And I uh, go, Hey, like, look at what I've turned into in the last two months because of the strength finder test It's like, sort of like, you know, uh, someone would do a, a, a body fat loss transformation. Uh, this is kind of sort of a, a psychology yeah. Uh, fat loss transformation. Yeah. You know, it's, it's super interesting. <laughs> so your show <laughs> is all about taking, uh, you know, the question you've asked yourself and like who you were and what you've gone through and going in and, and creating a, a life of your dreams, right? Creating a, a living out of it. And, uh, you know, I talk with my clients a lot about, you know, the importance of using every life experience and every educational experience um, to push you forward. Uh, one of my favorite sayings is I never, I never lose. I only win or I learn. Right. And I, I also believe that life happens for you and not to you. Right. And so you can use all of these life experiences to push you forward, or you can also choose to let, to let yourself be a victim of your life experiences and kind of sit back and go, well, there's nothing I can do about this now. So this happened to me and that really stinks. But, but, I, and, and I don't believe that everything happens for a reason, right? There are lots of people out there who think that, you know, this just happened for a reason, this bad thing happened for a reason. So I, I'm supposed to just, you know, accept that. Well, what if that actually wasn't true? But what if even out of bad situations and bad things, great things could happen? And I believe that to be um, absolute truth. So as you're looking at you know, the things that maybe knocked you down really hard or uh, your education that you think, um, boy, I think I wasted my time. Um, I could have easily, I, you know, again, I have four, two four-year degrees. I could have easily said, oh, I wasted that education because I'm not actively using those degrees right now in my business. However, my education is never wasted right? I, I, I had my first degree was in nutrition. And so I use that every single day, right? Uh, my second degree was in nursing. I use that every single day. That education wasn't wasted. Those experiences are never wasted. The question is, what are you going to do with what you've got in your past? Are you going to use it for good and maybe help other people who are going through what you went through so that they can um, process through a, a terrible experience um, more easily than you did with more tools than you had? Um, maybe that's the thing. Or maybe, you know, you use your education and your experiences otherwise, um, but you can always use them for for good if you choose it. Uh, and that's not to say that that is an easy choice. 
but it is absolutely a choice. And when we realize that, we put ourselves into the driver's seat of our own lives, right? Um, and and when we can be in the driver's seat of our own lives, yeah. how empowering and how uh, encouraging. And and now now you look at your life experiences, you look at your education, you look at you know what are the values that are most important to me, and now you add in your strength themes as well. And now you realize not only do I have the confidence to move forward with this idea, with this business plan, with uh, this avenue of my life, I actually have a responsibility to show up and use this for good. That is so cool. That is so cool. I love how you touch on that, that you, you know, it, you can choose whether or not you want to mm -hmm. say that you quote unquote wasted this. And I know as well as I know so many other people have the same thought that they wasted money. They wasted time that they'll never get back at, in an education because they're uh, really freaking out about the future because let's face it, everything that you could do for some reason, there's a stigma and there's a story that you need to tell yourself that everything you do needs to amount to some sort of uh perfect career or perfect job or whatever and i um i want to ask you do you think that there is a perfect job for you and i don't know i have an inkling of of an opinion on it um thinking that there isn't but you can create it you can create a life worth living by just uh mm -hmm. knowing your strengths and i'd love for you to kind of go into so there's two questions in here uh the sort of, is there a perfect job? And then another question is, um, how can someone take the psych psychometric, repeatable, and reliable mm -hmm. steps after they get this test um, and actually implement it into being okay with actually just, well, maybe they're not in the job that it right. says they should so be in and just being okay I with that. I believe that, that they're... Um that everybody is here on this planet for a reason. Um, however, I don't believe that it's necessarily just one reason. So humans have free will, which means that we get to choose. And uh, I believe that dreams are put in our hearts. I believe that desires are put in our hearts, um, you know, not to punish us like, oh my gosh, that's so far away and how could I ever achieve that? But to drive us to, to, to towards what we were put on this earth for. Um, now, do I believe that if you don't know what your purpose is, that you're somehow failing? Absolutely not. In fact, uh, Liz Gilbert wrote the book, uh, Big Magic. I don't know if you're familiar with that book or not. Um, she also, she, she was, oh, she was also the one who wrote language, Eat, Pray, Love, love right? And this this, this <laughs> yeah, book awesome. boomed into a giant blockbuster movie. Yeah. Um, and then she went on to write Big Magic. And so what, after uh, Eat, Pray, Love got this huge visibility, she was a sought after speaker. And so people would book her to talk about living out your purpose and not giving up on your dream and all of this. And what she found was that people were a bit uh, sometimes disheartened by her saying, you know, I stuck to this and look, it paid off because gosh, there are musicians and writers and um, artists and all sorts of other creatives, right? That are not supporting, not paying their mortgage, not paying their rent with what they love to do. And so um, it, it helped her to sort of revamp, you know, I have this deep purpose and I wasn't willing to give up on it um, because I, I knew that this was this was something I can, wanted to continue to do. But A, she never forced her writing to pay her bills. She always had jobs on the side um, to help support pay, pay her bills because she didn't want to, get, want to give her creativity that much pressure right? Um, so that's number one. And secondly, when she, when, when you think about your purpose and you just don't know what it is, right? Sometimes that pressure alone can crush you. So instead what she recommends and what I also recommend is follow your curiosity. When you follow your curiosity, you might find that the thing that you thought, Hey, this is really neat. I'm going to try this. 
isn't so great after all, right? But you might find that, yes, I want to go into this deeper and deeper and deeper. And so by following your curiosity, you are much more likely to find your purpose eventually or the purpose that drives you than if you were to sit there wring your hands, take every profile under the sun, every, every career uh, profile under the sun to figure out what should I be doing? Well, hey, how about just follow your curiosity and see what turns up for you when you when you do that. Um, the Strengths Finder profile is uh, very often uh, people try to use it that way, right? They want to use it to to find their direction for a career. Now, the Strengths Finder profile isn't going to tell you what you're going to do, right? Um, your life experiences, your education, that will give you your what. Uh, your values and your life experiences will often give you your why. Your Strengths Finder profile will give you how you're going to go about doing whatever it is that you're curious or passionate about doing. It's going to tell you this is the way that you should go about uh, launching a coaching business. This is the way that you should go about uh, being a writer. Um, or this is the way that you should go about being a real estate agent. It's not going to tell you your what. It will tell you your how. And man, the how is such a valuable part when you're, when you're launching into something new, right? Hey, Logan Tyler Nelson here. I would so appreciate it if you took some time to hit the subscribe button. I really want to just honestly live and give. Why? Because I was told when I was young that if you're feeling down, the best way to feel better is by lifting someone up again. So in an effort to make someone feel less alone, please hit the subscribe button so the podcast has a better chance of being found and making someone feel less alone. And if you're feeling down, hey, it can help you. Know that by hitting that subscribe button, you just did someone a huge favor. So thank you for hitting that subscribe button. Yeah, so important. So, I mean, you know, there's that why, there's that what, there's that where, but the how is always the scariest part for, I think, uh, everyone. I'm not going to say most people. I'm going to say mm-hmm. everyone because they go, I know my why, but how do I really do it? And, and they want, they want that, that extreme certainty. Um, and, and you, I mean, everyone's guilty of it. Of course, like it's scary to start, start something new and actually do this thing that uh, is, is big and it's scary to change. Um, but doesn't mean that you, like you said earlier, I love how you said, uh, it doesn't mean that you have to do this mm-hmm. thing forever i'm kind of uh, interpreting what you said which is like just because you pick one thing now doesn't mean you have to do that one thing forever um it just means you're doing that one thing for for now and um and in following your curiosity to me uh is one of my personal philosophies that i use uh, i use compassion curiosity and creativity those are my three c's if i don't have those things that i'm doing and I'm exhausted and I look back and I reflect and I think if I'm not compassionate about not giving to something, if I'm not curious about some subject or if I'm not creating something, then that's the reason why I'm exhausted. Do you have your own sort of like personal philosophy that uh, you follow? With regards to, that gives you with energy regards and, to and, and how I spend my time and my energy or with regards to how I... Um, how I've launched my business or help me know a little bit more about what you're asking. Yeah. Uh, more so like for me, I guess I am my business. Like I very, I guess it's not good to identify yourself with a certain job, but for me, um, I really, 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 mm-hmm. um, am curious about myself and how I function and operate in the world. So I really like to use my own sort of like personal philosophy as also my business statement. Gotcha. My mission. So whatever mission. way you want to answer what you, that okay. is Okay. All you. right. Mission I I'll, can talk about. <laughs> no. So yeah. yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I wanted to make sure I was actually answering It's just different language, I guess. Okay. So gotcha. He, my, my mission actually can be summed up in one single word. Um, and that is shine. So my mission is to not only bring shine and brightness to this world, 
right? By how I, I fill a room with positive energy, right? By that brightness, um, by, by showing up as my best and being bright myself, but it's to also help other people shine. And uh, when we look at shining, and really being our best self, letting that internal shine out. What the things that hold us back from that are things like shame, things like guilt, things like other people's opinions about us, right? They put us in the shadows, right? We shrink back into the shadows. And when we're in the shadows, we can't shine as brightly. So um, what I helped people to do is uncover what makes them shine. And then I help them to embrace it and then live that out in their business and in their life so that they can truly shine the brightest. And the interesting thing about shine is that nobody's light detracts from anyone else's light. Shine is not a zero sum game. There's not just a certain amount of light that goes around in this world. It is actually eternally abundant. So by one person shining bright, what it does is it actually empowers and encourages other people to come into the light and shine bright themselves. And so um, by, by shining brighter, you don't detract from anyone else's light. No, no, no. You just add to it. And so that is my, my overall mission is to help people to truly shine their absolute brightest. And my responsibility is to shine my brightest that I can possibly shine as well. Hey friends. So let me ask you real quick. Are you someone who's trying to get more visibility? Who's trying to be in front of the crowd? Well, if that's you, I want to let you know that first of all, you're not alone. Second of all, if you want to get on more podcasts or ones that actually scratch your own itch, meaning maybe you have a book or a business or maybe you do speaking or if you don't yet do speaking, maybe you can and maybe you'd love to. Well, I put something together for you and in this little giveaway, I'm going to show you how to pitch yourself or podcast and how to actually be professional when you show up so you can be the next authority in your niche. So you can start scratching your own itch. I know what it's like to build something, create something, and then there just be crickets. No one wants that. You need to be seen. You need to be heard because you have a message to share. A message that is worthy of hearing. Podcasts nowadays, more than ever, are being consumed by people. And guess who's actually learning the knowledge that's being shared? It's podcast listeners. It gives you a license to be an authority in whatever area you really dream of being an authority in. So if this at all starts to give you a little itch to scratch, just email logan at logantylernelson.com. Again, that's Logan at LoganTylerNelson.com. Oh, that is so cool. That is so cool. Ah, oh, I love that you're so well at um, articulating that. I, I, um, I really, really recommend anybody that is a little like a I guess that that uh, that uh, gets that chronic idea syndrome. So I don't want to call it a disorder, but let's face it, you're exposed to so much during the day that inspires you to actually maybe write down your own mission statement just to keep you on track and clear on on why you started this thing in the first place, and then taking the Strength Finders test, which I'll I'll put all in the show notes and how you can find that. Um, as a way to just keep you on track and keep you accountable. And uh, I really want to ask you, though, uh, what, what was something that in the Strength Finders test did you find that surprised you that you were like, wow, I can't believe that it said that about me? 
Yeah. So what I find um, for uh, all of my clients um, is that they come back to me with one of two opinions about their strengths finder profile. Uh, number one is, uh, oh my gosh, this is exactly like me. And the other is, oh, I didn't like it at all. Right. So uh, I had a, an experience when I took mine um, similar to the second. Right. Where it's like, oh, I'm not sure if I like that. Right. Um, and so my strengths finder, my top five strengths finder themes are futuristic. Woo, which is actually an acronym, stands for winning others over positivity activator and strategic. Now, I'm not going to go into what all of those mean exactly. And certainly you can listen to, to my podcast and, and I talk all about strengths there. Um, but the woo strength theme, um, when I read the definition, which is you can connect with people almost immediately and uh, et cetera, et cetera. But one of the overuse patterns was that um, when it sort of is working too hard or turned up too loud, that you can be superficial or people can see you as flaky. And I absolutely repulsed against that. And I thought, I don't want to be that. And so I didn't understand that that was, uh, that was an overuse pattern. So our strengths can become our weaknesses when they're not actually serving us or serving others. And so this is part of the awareness aspect of how you're wired and uh, how you're how you're showing up in the world, and so I thought I don't I don't want to be that I don't want to you know just win people over and then not have long term relationships or you know be flaky or that kind of thing. And truth be told, that's not me, but that is an overuse pattern that I could fall into. And the reason I bucked so hard against that is that I had had experiences like that in the past. So what's important for people to understand about their strengths profile. Um, is that because you've got these five, these top five themes, right? That you are, are your easy buttons. They're your go-to. Often when you run out of tools or you don't know how to use them, you're going to use them too much, right? That just makes sense because they're right there, but you just don't quite know how to use it. It's like using a hammer to try to screw in uh, a screw, right? It, that, that it's the wrong tool or you're just using that tool too much. And so part of um, really embracing all of our strengths is understanding how they function, how they function under stress, how they function when things are going your way, how they function when things are not going your way. And now once you have that awareness, you can choose to respond instead of react. So um, I say all that to say when I first got my profile, I actually wasn't a fan of it. I didn't like this woo aspect of, of uh, my profile. And I, I thought it was a, a negative thing. Um, but what I found is that as I optimized and optimize and optimize and serve others with it and, and allow it to give me energy, um, man, I love it. It's a great thing. And I love how I'm wired. That's so cool that it's like, you know, uh, to me, this Strikes Finders test is kind of like the indicators on a car, like you see it kind of lighten up the, the oil or check oil, uh, uh oh, uh, check, check low gas, low fuel. And um, that's something that you might not want to read. You don't want to read it because you, you go, oh gosh, like that means there's something wrong with the car. And even it's more personal when it's your own thing. If it's in your own body, it's in your own head, like, oh God, um, I'm flaky. Ah. Uh, I don't want to like fix that. And if that's not even something that you want to believe that is something of you, that's true of you, it might not be true of you, but it's the story that I talk about this a lot. The story that you tell yourself is the one that is going to ultimately be true. If you really do tell yourself all the time, like I, I set appointments with people and then I flake out with them. And I know that you don't do that, Alyssa. Um, but that's a, a tendency that your per, uh, your profile um, often sometimes has is someone that really is a people pleaser that tells people what they want to hear rather than actually doing something that they want to do. You know, it's the sort of um, the, the, the yes pleasure that people feel when they say yes to things versus saying no. So I want to, um, I want to kind of like round this out because I feel like we've done a really good job of, of um, just telling 
you know, what you're about and talking about who you are as a person. But I do want to go into um, what I call scratching the surface curiosity questions, if that's okay with sure. you. Can I clarify just one little thing before we move forward? You, oh, of course you can. Awesome. Yeah, please so, do. So, and, and Wu can be absolutely a people pleaser. Um, but what, what's interesting is it, it doesn't mean that it's a, uh, it's, it's flaky in the sense of like forgets appointments and things like that. What it tends to do more so is it pays attention to the person that's right in front of them. So by flaky, it's more like, oh, I had this friend that, you know, I talked to six months ago and I've forgotten to call them. For, for, forgotten to call them back since then, right? So it's not necessarily about, uh, even in, in overuse, about um, not being able to show up for commitments. It's much more about uh, paying attention to the person that's in the room and sort of forgetting everything else, right? So, and and the reason that I talk about uh, overuse patterns, right? So so as a strengths coach, I, I look at the good, right? That's always the focus. I bring up the overuse patterns so that people can begin to give themselves some compassion because we judge ourselves so harshly for the behavior that we don't understand, right? For our reactions that we don't understand. And when you can begin to understand that your natural reactions, um, are, are often point to your actual strengths. You can go, oh, well, no wonder I behaved that way or no wonder I reacted that way. I didn't know any better then, right? And so the whole, the whole flipping the switch there is A, when you can give yourself that compassion, you can start to look at your behavior from a place of curiosity instead of judgment. That's huge. And number two, when we know better, right? And we have more awareness, we can choose a response instead of a knee-jerk reaction. And that is a, a, an incredibly empowering experience. Oh, thank you so much for, uh, for clearing that up. I, I loved it. I loved it so much that you said that. Um, gosh, I, we, I, we could talk for like hours. <laughs> I know we could. Um, but I do, yeah, I like to ask just these uh, few bits of questions. Um, some are a little bit deeper and then some are just like first thing that comes to mind. And uh, I know your time is limited as well as anyone that's listening to this. Like, yeah, it'd be great to consume things all day. But guess what? You got to go out there and create some stuff. Um, so uh, and, and make friends with either myself or Alyssa. So if you heard anything that we said, just Instagram, Facebook, tweet about it, like and and get plugged into becoming friends with us not just like hitting the next button and, and going oh i'm gonna go listen to the next mentor tell me something that i need to listen to or the next like person in my life that i just want to be around more uh because my my brain just needs to be you know busy with something and thinking about something no like actually like stop on autopilot and and, and get connected with us and i'll plug in the show notes how you can do that with Alyssa at the end but First, we're going to go through this curiosity, scratching the surface questions. And the first one I'd like to ask you is, um, is, a, is giving questions questions, which is uh, what's a thought that you um, keep having that you might be ashamed about having, uh, but you just wish that it would kind of go away, but you know, it's just a thought. Hmm. It's a good question. I think, um, you know, one thing that comes up for me is, uh, am I going to be Am I going to be accepted um, because that uh, that that people pleaser right is so deeply ingrained? Um, I have to remind myself on a day to day basis that I'm more committed to uh, being my best me than to pleasing others, and so that's how I sort of satisfy that recurring thought that sometimes comes up. Ah, oh, wow! You're so not alone in that. Um, wow. Every single self help book I've ever read, uh, which I I am a uh, I, my name is Logan Tyler Nelson. I'm addicted to self help <laughs> books. I guess I have raised my hand while I say that. Um, I just love the stories that often happen, but often at the very end, they all come down to just self acceptance. So you're not the only one um, that that res that says that. Uh, the next question I'd love to ask is um, if you just had like one quote to put on a billboard for everyone to start reading to themselves, uh, your friends, your family members to kind of remember 
Alyssa Dyer Nelson, what would it be? Uh, this was a, actually a saying that I came up with years and years ago, even before I launched my coaching practice. Um, and I actually made little business cards um, that I had them printed uh, that said this, and I would hand them out to people. And it said this, hello, beautiful. You are magnificent. You sparkle and shine, and there is nobody like you in this world. You are uniquely made for a unique purpose. Don't ever forget that. And that is an Alyssa Dare Nelson original right. right there. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. The hairs on the back of my neck are standing up if yours aren't. I don't know. Oh, God. That is amazing. I love that. That's I am. Oh, yes. I love that. Um, I just. I just, I'm sorry. I guess I'm, I'm, I'm over celebrating that quote because that one resonated with me so much. But um, the like two more questions. One thing is, how can anyone that's listening to this support you, and how can we support yeah, you? Well, you know, we can we can walk on this mission together. Um, and my my mission, I I don't want to be a very small one. I want it to be a worldwide. Um, mission and focus, which is helping everybody to shine in their in their best. And so, I actually created a uh, an e workbook for people to figure out their four things. Um, we talked a little bit about those four things: your values, your education, your life experiences, and your strengths. You know, how do you put those together to make your unique recipe? Um, and so, I created an e workbook uh, that I would love to give away. Um, to those listening um, so that they can figure out their four things. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I'll throw that in the show notes so it's going to be an easy click if you're listening to this on your Android device or yeah, if, your iPhone. No worries because all you need to do is click on it. Don't, what were you saying? If you're I'm not sorry. by uh, you know, a computer or a, or a hyperlink right at the moment, you can simply go to daretosucceed.com forward slash Logan. So it's D A I R E, the number two, sixseed.com forward slash Logan, and you'll get your free e workbook. Check that out. That is so neat. That's so cool. Um, awesome. L like, who the heck doesn't want to learn more about themselves? Uh, I don't know. I think that's really neat. Uh, so thank you for that. And then the last thing is, is, is there any, Thing that you wish I would have asked you that I didn't. Gosh, ask we've had you. such a great conversation here. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know that we, we. I mean, there's, there's always lots and lots of that I could that we could cover, um, but not in short, not in a short period of time. <laughs> um, but I do want to leave people with, um, with this, this final thing, which is that the absolute truth is that you are freaking awesome. There's no doubt about it. There is no qualms, no matter what your history is, no matter where you came from, no matter what your strengths are, no matter um, where you've been or what's gone on in your world, you are freaking awesome. And your choice is to live that out or to continue living in your shadows. And how can you come out of the shadows even more and shine as brightly as you were intended to? That is so cool. Yeah. Agreed in so many ways. So thank you, Alyssa, for taking the time out of your day and uh, joining me on Scratch Your Own Itch. And uh, like I said, I, I, I hope you'll in, uh, accept the invitation that later down the road, I uh, will go through this transformation together. And, uh, you know, we can see what kind of uh, psychological fat loss transformation I had. Um, after I take this test. Um, and yeah. I can't wait to hear your profile results, Logan. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. Until then, I will uh, talk to you later. Gosh, I hate goodbyes, but got to do it. Thanks for having me, Logan. Thank you. All right, there's another episode of Scratch Your Own Itch. 
Uh, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to support the show by listening. Um, the biggest compliment you could ever pay me is just by sharing this because honestly, it doesn't take much and it feels so good when people create something and take time. And when I see someone take time to create something that really just changed my day, either made me feel less alone, maybe put a smile on my face, made me laugh, made me feel wiser. I always want to share it with the world because why? When I share something that resonates with me, why not share it? I mean, that's just kind of the thing that goes around, and it's free. It takes no time at all other than just a click of the button, share, on either Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, any of those social media platforms would be great to share this. So I really appreciate it, and I want to say that um, anybody who's looking to gain authority or expertise in their area and they don't want to take another year or year and a half to write a book and wait until that's published, I think the best way is right now is to start a podcast. So if you're at all interested in starting a podcast, if you meet the certain requirements, I would love to help you with a podcast and also get a website going for you as well. And this is not an easy task. It's hard to actually get it done and get it out there. So every now and then we need some help and I'm here for you. So please reach me at Logan at LoganTylerNelson.com if you're interested at all. And don't ever forget, you matter and you're enough.